Grips are indispensable members of a film crew, responsible for all means of camera support, either static or moving. And in conjunction with the cinematographer and the gaffer, they assist in the managing and sculpting of available or generated light. In all matters, grips look after the safety and general welfare of the cast and crew while working on set. Grips are skilled technicians and draw their experience from many different highly technical vocations. Most grips start out in a completely different line of work. I know former circus riggers, sailors, master carpenters, and even a cowboy who have successfully transitioned to the grip department. The knowledge necessary to become a successful grip is diverse and is constantly evolving. Have you seen an amazing shot in a movie recently? Chances are, the grip department helped make that shot possible. Part mechanic, part engineer, the key grip and his crew keep the camera moving and the light under control every day on movie sets all over the world. The key grip is a department head and participates in the preparation phase of production. During prep, the key grip works closely with the cinematographer and the gaffer. This is when the script is broken down, locations are scouted, tests are conducted, and any special equipment required is either fabricated or arranged for. The importance of prep cannot be overstated. Every key grip I know works hard to design the very best shooting plan possible within this time frame. Everyone marvels at the beauty of natural light, but the problem is it isn't guaranteed and it never lasts very long. That's why most of us prefer the control of shooting on stage rather than battling the sun, the clouds, and the wind. Think of the grip department as the infantry that outflanks the challenges of day exterior conditions. These grips are building a 12 by 12 frame for a scene on the beach today. This one will be used to bounce light onto the actor. In most cases, you want the sun behind your subject, location permitting. This is called shooting in backlight. Grips have all kinds of cards and fabrics for softening or bouncing light to achieve a balanced exposure. The kind of bounce you choose is based on the needs of the story. Unless it's cloudy, day exterior bounce fill relies on the sun. The amount of light hitting the subject is determined by the kick angle of the bounce source. I tend to set that level by eye. The lighting in this shot is flat. To add contrast, we create negative fill by placing large black flags on one side of the subject. This cuts the ambience and darkens one side of the face, giving it shape and character. Grips can also use highly reflective boards to direct sunlight where it is desired. Not surprisingly, these boards are called reflectors, or shiny boards. This is probably the most primitive basic lighting instrument we have. Been around since the teens. This is what the soft side looks like to an actor. There's the soft side. Panning it off, and here's the hard side, panning on, boom. 
For a straight dose of sunlight, they carry large mirrors. Obviously, you need the sun for these to work and a steady hand on them to prevent the beam from jittering in the wind. So it's a primitive unit and they're a bit passe now, but we drag one out every week on every shoot for something. Either a, a splash of light on the back wall, a little soft fill coming in a window, uh, you name it. Occasionally, we have to shoot when the sun is directly overhead. To help reduce unflattering top light, the grips will build a frame and tie a silk or some other diffuse fabric to it. If your scene starts out under cloudy conditions and then clears off, the grips will build a large frame and skin it with a heavy diffusion material to create a cloudy feel. And that maintains the lighting continuity throughout the scene. Flags and nets are called gobos because they go between the light and the subject to make shadows or create texture. Here are the four basic gobos grips use to sculpt, diffuse, or cut light. With just one light bulb and gobos made of materials from the office supply and fabric store, you can test a variety of looks at very little expense. Take your photography to the next level by adding contrast with flags and nets. Big setups require rigging grips to get the set ready in advance of the shooting crew. Pre-rigging starts the implementation of the plan created during prep. Today's work is taking place at Paramount on a soundstage built in 1922. These rigging grips are preparing for a visual effects shoot. They'll get most of the big pieces roughed in by the end of the day. On a large project, rigging grips will be working only a day or two in advance of the main unit. There are additional manpower costs in carrying a rigging crew, but these teams are far cheaper than a full shooting crew doing the same work. Final lighting will occur on the first day of photography. Try to imagine an action movie without camera movement. Grips are probably best known for moving the camera. They use many different methods, and here are a few examples. Some grips specialize in rigging cameras to non-movie equipment. It's hard to predict how we'll be moving the camera in the future, but it all started 110 years ago when Edwin S. Porter needed a shot from a moving train. The men who rigged and safety that camera started a trend that would forever change the way movies were photographed. I'm not sure when they started calling these handy guys grips, but grips were on that train in 1903.
I've often said that if I wasn't in camera, I would want to be in the grip department. And now you know why. The nets take down the density of the light. Now this is pretty sharp. Thank you.